We'll have to see how this next game goes. We do get to see Miracle Rogue against Druid. In mm -hmm. the past, Miracle Rogue has been favored against Druid, but the Druid decks that try to be a little bit faster and have the better early board presence and play double Savage Roar have often done very well against Miracle Rogue. So we'll have to see how this matchup plays out, right. whether or not he, our Druid player is playing uh, that you know shade of Nax Ramis double two drop type That's of deck. That's right. And Dominus is uh, privy of this and is considering keeping the Fan of Knives against the Creeper, which will leave two one ones. I think this is a good keep against what you would expect from a Druid. Uh, a terrible keep from the against the Druids of the past. Uh, Tichu had in his opening hand a Azure Drake and a Gnomish Inventor. So this looks like a slower type of uh, control Druid. Yeah, the Druid deck that Tichu has, we haven't seen it yet. And it looks like it's not the Strife Crow slash Kalento Cloud9 Druid deck that we've seen mm -hmm. some of the other players using. And I, I wonder if that's going to throw oh Dominus man. off at all. Dominus has one of the best openings against the, well, best hands against the Control Druid. Uh, Tichu taking it slow with the, well, I mean, Innervate Harvest Golem is fast, but in terms of fastness, that's one of the lowest threats you can get out that early. Right. You certainly nowadays would much prefer a Shade of Nexramus on turn one if you're going to be Innervating a play. The Harvest Golem does get something going, but it doesn't do enough damage to threaten to win the game by itself. That's right. So he will have to pair it with hopefully something else that he can draw or play. I mean, that's what you want when uh, up against a rogue. you got to put on pressure so that Dominus can't just do something like Gadgets and Coin Conceal. <laughs> Unfortunately, that is the dream, and Dominus is realizing the dream. Uh, Tichu opens another Innervate, but has nothing good to Innervate into, and is unfortunately forced to turn two hero ability, turn three hero ability. Tichu drew his second Innervate, which at this point is probably not what he wanted to see. Dominus has a stacked hand. He is down to 24, but the outlook is certainly very bright. Yeah. He gets to take out the Harvest Golem in its entirety this turn. Extremely efficiently. Very efficiently, and do so in a way that leaves him with the dagger still in play. Uh, the 3-1 dagger ready to go. That's very nice. Tichu has drawn a Haunted Creeper on his turn. So that gives him the potential to do something like Creeper plus Argus. Right. But even that is really unexciting. Creeper on turn four is already unexciting. Yes, so it is. So Tichu is sort of really losing steam here, and Dominus is just about to get started in maybe one turn from now. That's right. So this turn is kind of the calm before the storm. Uh, could consider hitting the Spider and then Fan of Knives. I think it's likely for Dominus to clear out the Creeper this turn so that he can know that there is the least amount of stuff possible opposing him when he does throw down his Auctioneer. He hasn't drawn a single prep yet, and so he may find one. If he does, and he already has Sap in hand, the Auctioneer turn will be extremely powerful. That's right. And we've seen Tichu's hand as well. He doesn't have anything that great he can play on turn five, even with the Innervate. He really doesn't. One of the best cards that he could draw would be an Ancient of Lore, so he can actually use the Innervate and hopefully find more things towards the win. But as it stands, Tichu playing a deck that so wants to have awesome. early board presence for a turn four Defender of Argus. Instead, Defender of Argus sat in his hand. Dominus can't really decide how he wants to oh, play it. Oh, that's a weird way to play it. And he decides he just wants to cycle his fan, but okay. not attack the Creeper. I see. Uh, he, yeah, I mean, he saves the blade, uh, the weapon for the Blade Flurry. That's an inspired way of playing. He does have the Blade Flurry, and that's the reasoning behind it. Blade Flurry, very powerful against Druid. It's powerful against a lot of things, to be honest and especially when you already have a Deadly Poison weapon in play. Mm. So he's preserving the weapon. He's saying, I'm not sure if I'm going to draw another Deadly Poison anytime soon, and I wouldn't want to turn off most of my Blade Flurry. Yep. Teach you uh, forced to play this 2-4 with 5 mana, essentially, and deal 2 damage to the face. Not that great, and he has managed to get the opponent down to 18 at least, which is a little bit of pressure, but here we go. Gadget Coin can seal the start us off. Right, what deals do you have for us today, buddy? An Assassin's Blade shows up, so we know that he's running a blade. A lot of people have cut it recently. Some people are still keeping it in. All right. Well, that's some good news for Tichu. No preparation draw. Uh, so this is going to be the turn where Tichu is going to be able to put on the most damage. 
Uh, looks like it's going to be six. At this point, Tichu is actually very much still in the game. He's mm -hmm. holding an Innervate and a Savage Roar. Ah. And I imagine his deck is probably running at least one. <laughs> probably if, two. If not, probably two. Actually, we should say of, probably. Copies of Force of Nature. That's right. He is playing a, a little bit slower of a deck. He's playing both Azure Drake and Gnomish Inventor. So he might not be playing both copies of the combo, but it still is pretty likely. And if he picks one up, he's going to be able to just win on turn seven. That's right. And he's got 34 health, so he's got a good amount of time to do it. Uh, the Earthen Ring Farseer pickup by Dominus is going to allow him to stabilize if he manages to clear the board, since the combo does 14 damage, quite famously, the Force of Nature and Savage Roar. He's deciding here if he wants to Blade Flurry or Sap. He goes with a Blade Flurry, which actually is draws probably the, the correct play. He draws into a prep, but he doesn't have anything great to prep right now. He's basically holding a weapon and infinity minions. He's thinking about prepping. He's like... What's the worst thing that I could draw? Oh, that, that's... Deadly Poison's probably not where you want to be. Yeah. And sapping that is not really where you want to be either. Yeah, he was hoping to draw something else. It is perhaps not the worst. Sapping it and drawing another card, considering your hand is not that great, is probably better than the alternative. Mm. Tichu ends up drawing an Argent Commander, which is yet another card that... Gets him closer to the win, but doesn't get him quite there yet. Oh boy, he's going for it, so that's a damage to him. So he's setting up for swipe win next turn, and uh, he can even deal an extra two damage on top of that. However, Dominus does have the Earthen Ring Farseer and does have Shadow Step, and he's still got the Gadget and Auctioneer at. He certainly had the option of just swiping the Auctioneer, or uh. maybe even just running his Argent into it. But he decides that he wants to win with the hand he has instead of the cards he could draw. That's right. And I, um, I approve of that play. Because even... Druid's basically up against the wall. So he has to try to go for something, even though it's unlikely. I would be really worried about the Earthen Ring. When your opponent has a Gadget and Auctioneer in play already, you usually operate under the assumption that they could probably find it if they don't mm -hmm. have it already. So his opponent is now at 7. He still is potentially in the game, and he decides not to Shadow Step the Earthen Ring before playing Edwin. Perhaps he wants to leave Edwin as a 6-6 six, six intentionally to dodge Big Game, big game Hunter. Uh, Druid is the class that is probably most likely oh, to no. play I Big Game Oh no, I think Dominus Hunter. is counting his damage for next turn. He may not Shadow Step the Earthen, which I feel would be a gigantic mistake. I, I also think it would be a mistake. There would be a lot more outs for your opponent to win if you don't Shadow Step it, but... All right, he is going for it. It wouldn't be completely unreasonable either. I think it would be very unreasonable <laughs> since he died a Force of Nature and the Hero ability. But he's going for it, so... Uh, Tichu is in a lot of trouble here. He's in a lot, a lot of trouble. And I don't know if there was anything he really could have even drawn. And now the writing is really on the wall for Tichu, and he's going to be looking at this hand. He might even just play the Azur Drake in order to <laughs> dig for a card that won't be there. There is no card. Uh, swipe plus Keeper of the Grove, I guess, takes it down to only five damage visible. Right, but that is not going to... I think what Teacher needs to do, or at least when you're in this type of hopeless situation, you have to be like, okay, well, maybe my opponent is not holding Leroy Jenkins. Mm -hmm. And then I will draw on the Force of Nature with the Azure Drake, and then I will draw Savage for a Nourish, naturally. I think what I probably would have done, would I would have swiped the face and put him at six, well and wrath the, wrath the Auctioneer, and said go, and just hope that your nine damage showing isn't enough to kill me. Uh, yeah, it, would be, it would be very unlikely, but then right. if you draw Force of Nature, you, you win. That's so. a good call. It, regardless, none of those circumstances would have happened. Dominus does pick up the win. Hmm. Crashes in. Giant, giant monsters created. Auctioneer had some sweet deals that game. Good. And a big congratulations to Tichu. 3 0 ing at the Miracle Rogue. Miracle Rogue, still really powerful. It's fallen out of favor a little bit, but it is certainly still very strong and a really powerful contender.